Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to install the Corsair H105 liquid cooler. Alright, so step one, open the box. Step two, take the shit out of the box. You can throw that manual away for now. You're probably going to want to keep it though, don't actually throw it away. Alright, it comes with your mounting brackets for the back. And some colored rings uh, in there too, uh, for whatever color scheme you're going for. This radiator also comes with two 120 millimeter fans. Pressure optimized for best radiator cooling and push configuration. And then of course the piece of resistance, the actual uh, pump and radiator. Uh, this one comes with thermal paste pre-applied. Although you can remove that paste and put your own if you like better stuff. Although it doesn't make much of a difference. And of course the radiator block. To remove the Intel stock cooler, you'll need to turn the pegs 90 degrees counterclockwise, although Trevor goes way past 90. Check the back to make sure that the pegs are fully removed before pulling on it. You'll probably need to wiggle the cooler a bit as it will be stuck with the thermal paste. So next we'll need to clean off the old thermal paste with minimum 70% isopropyl alcohol. We have 99% because more alcohol is always better. You'll just give that a bit of a rub down with a cloth that won't leave any fluff or cause any static. There we go, now that your CPU is nice and clean and shiny again, it's time to install the backplate. Our liquid cooler came with an AMD bracket, but we're using the Intel one. All you need to do is line up the four pegs with the four holes in the motherboard and hold it with your hand. Then it's time to install the standoffs. Our cooler came with uh, three different kinds. Uh, make sure you check the manual to make sure you're using the right ones. Alright, things are looking good. Now it's time to make room for the radiator by uninstalling this big ass fan. Uninstalling fans is pretty simple, we won't go too in depth. You know, unscrew, take out, it's pretty basic. Alright, now the fan's gone and the CPU is clean, it's time to install the radiator fans. Your fans should have a few arrows on them indicating which way they rotate and which way they push the air. In this instance you want the, the fans forcing the air into the radiator. This is called a push configuration. Push configurations take air from inside the case. As long as your case has high airflow, this should be fine. Now you're going to take the long screws and mount the fans to the radiator. Then make sure it's secure. Now it's time to mount the radiator into the case. Be careful because you don't want to damage the fins. You'll want to find a safe place to rest the pump and CPU cooler assembly. Now what you do is you take the small screws and the washers and mount the radiator by lining up the holes on the radiator with the holes in the case. So to mount the pump, we're first going to take off that protective plastic and then line up the four holes in the pump mounting bracket to the back plate we just installed. On some f smaller form factor motherboards, you might need to orient it with the logo upside down because the RAM is too close to the CPU socket and the tubes won't really fit. After you get the pump in place, you just screw on the four thumb screws onto the standoffs that you installed earlier. Afterwards, you'll tighten them down, going from corner to corner, opposites. And the Corsair ones are designed to just screw in until they stop and against the standoff. And when they stop, you're done. Next came the cables. With the radiator in the way, this was a bit of a tricky thing to do. But uh, the way you're going to want to do this is you're going to want to take the Y cable, which uses one, C uh, one fan header and turns it into two, and plug it into uh, CPU fan one. Then cable manage it. Um, with the radiator in the way, this is also tricky to do. but. By putting all the cables in the back, it makes it a lot easier. Alright, so the pump power cord uses a 3-pin fan header. You'll notice there's a 4-pin on that system fan 1. But because of the slot on the bottom of the fan header, it only goes on one way. It, it just offsets by one pin. Like that. And then you'll figure out some form of cable management. Like that. Alright, let's uh, plug her in, turn her on, see how it looks. Alright, so 27 degrees is what my CPU temp is at. With the Intel stock cooler, it was normally idling at 40. So that's actually a very good improvement. Thanks, Corsair. It comes with RGB. 
Oh my god.